in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, and the Greek is very specific, it's the farthest one out. Well, how many are there? There's only seven. Antichrist comes at the sixth, and he's, his message is going to be, I've come to rapture you away. I want to gather you to me. But Christ doesn't return until the last, the farthest one out, the seventh. You better wait. Don't be taken beforehand. For the trumpet shall sound, not maybe, it's going to in its time, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. That is to say, those that are spiritually dead will be raised incorruptible. That means they will have a spiritual body that is not perishable, and we shall be changed. Every living being will be changed into a spiritual body, even those that are spiritually dead. Verse 53. For this corruptible, that means this flesh body, must put on incorruption. Which incorruption means a, a body that doesn't age, it doesn't wither, it doesn't get old, doesn't get sick. That's what the change is, is into the spiritual bodies. And this mortal, uh-oh, what do we have here? This mortal always applies to your soul. That is your very being. This mortal, and the word mortal in the Greek means liable to die. Meaning you haven't got it made at judgment if you're only a mortal soul. This mortal must put on immortality, that is deathlessness. Meaning to gain eternal life by believing upon the Lord Jesus Christ. To know that he paid the price. That if you believe upon him, that you have that eternal life. And, and so it is. Uh, you, you will find, make a note of Matthew chapter 10, verse 28, where it stipulates, don't, don't fear people that can destroy your flesh body, but rather you fear God who can cause your soul to perish. And he can in that lake of fire at the end. It's all in the book of life. It's your life. You live it. And you'll answer for it, good or bad, or somewhere in between. Verse 54 to complete it here. So when this corruptible, when this flesh body shall have put on the spiritual body, incorruptible, and this mortal, this liable to die soul, shall have put on immortality by believing upon the Lord Jesus Christ, the true Christ, not the fake, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up, in victory and so it will be what a wonderful time we live in but not a time to be deceived it's a time for you to believe and to know that God is the God of living nobody goes out here in a hole in the ground except the flesh which came from the clay and will return to it but you have a perfect body that doesn't get sick doesn't get old but you also have a soul, and it will either be mortal or immortal. It's according to what your standing with Almighty God is. So now, returning to uh, 1 Thessalonians, uh, um, again, we'll pick it up in chapter 4, and uh, let's, we'll go with the next verse, which would be verse 17. And verse 17 reads, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to see the Lord in the air. This word air in the Greek is your uh, circumvent breath. That means the breath of life body, your spiritual body. Got it? Not, it doesn't mean atmosphere. It doesn't mean sky. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now, it is very, very important that you know what uh, this word, Paul spoke colloquial Greek. And when he uses the terminology here, cloud, it's a great cloud of witnesses. It's just like with country street talk, you would say there's a cloud of locusts or a cloud of blackbirds. And Paul, again, to document what I'm saying is in, in Hebrews chapter 12, Paul says, we Christians are going together as a great cloud of witnesses to run a foot race like they run in the Olympics, for he was in Athens where the Olympics began. Okay. But he called them a cloud to run a foot race, not to fly. 
It's a figure of speech, and it means the large group that remains true, that holds solid with the living Word of God. Now, what do you think God thinks about people that teach people to fly to save their souls? Didn't say anything about it here. It said Christ is returning. And there is a place in the Word of God, though, that he does talk about this. There is more written about the millennium, the Lord's Day, in the book of Ezekiel than there is in all of the New Testament. For from chapter 40 to the end is all about the Lord's Day, the millennium. But in, in the 13th chapter of Ezekiel, he says, I'm tired of the false prophets, the fake teachers, preachers that rob my people. And in the 18th verse, we're going to cut right to the chase here, in Ezekiel 13, it reads that uh, this is what they say, these fakes. And they say, Thus saith the Lord God, Woe to the women. You'll notice women is in italics. It's added. It means the people that sow pillows to all armholes and make kerchiefs upon the head of every stature to hunt souls Will ye hunt the souls of my people, and will you save the souls alive that come unto you? In other words, let's break this back in the Hebrew. It says, you're sowing, I'll call it pillowcases, and here's God's outstretched saving arms, and you're hiding them. You're covering them over and teaching people to fly to save their souls. Do you know how unhappy this makes Almighty God? Let's read on, verse 19. And will you pollute me among my people for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread? You're just teaching for the money. That's all you care about. To slay the souls that should not die with your flatteries, and to save the souls alive that should not live worthless by your lying to my people that hear your lies. What lies is that? Well, let's read and find out. Do you believe God's word or do you believe man? Verse 20, Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against your pillows, wherewith ye there hunt the souls to make them fly, and I will tear them from your arms, and will let the souls go, even the souls that you hunt to make them fly. Uh, our father's against it, this so-called rapture doctrine. Well, you don't have to understand the book of Revelations. You're going to fly away. That's not biblical. That's a lie. I, I, I cannot imagine who would be stupid enough to listen to a man that would tell them they didn't have to understand God's Word. There, there's something, I mean, there would be a great gap of, of, not, of um, learning that should have been there that isn't. I mean, there's nothing but a blank place up between the ears. If you would let some man tell you that you could, should listen to him and not understand God's Word, especially if you were a student of the Word, you would know that regardless of what language that you say the word revelation, it means to reveal or to make known. Well, why would it do that? Because God wants you to know it, to understand it. A child can understand it if you listen to the Word instead of the traditions of man. God is against those that would tell people. And, and again, if you, you listen to one of these Bible thumpers that tell you, well, there's more than one Trump. Yeah, there's seven of them. But if you've listened to what scriptures we've read today, Christ doesn't come until the seventh. The Antichrist comes at the sixth. The book of Revelation tells you that, makes it very clear, even gives his name in the Greek and the Hebrew, so that you can't go wrong. In the second book of Thessalonians, we'll clear all this up. How precious it is to have an understanding of God's Word, to know that we have two bodies. 
And the minute you breathe your last breath in these flesh bodies, that spiritual body steps out and returns to the Father that gave it. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 7 and 8 to document. And also, as he said uh, back in the verse 15, God's Word declares. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7 and 8. Instantly, your spirit, the intellect of your soul, meaning your soul, your mortal, returns to Almighty God.